cloud of dust in a hearty high-o silver, the Lone Ranger. Forceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'll Silver. Away! Snakey Cook was leader of an outlaw gang that terrorized the settlers throughout the Southwest Territory. Snakey wasn't content to have his gang commit a robbery and then ride away. In one way or another, he added a touch of ruthlessness to every crime. For instance, the gang held up a stagecoach in the Pecos Valley. Get it there! Come on! Get on! Come on! Holy mackerel outlaws! I better stop! Ho! Ho there! Ho! Ho there! Ho! Ho there! Ho! All right, driver, throw down the cash box and don't waste time doing it. Sure, sure. Yep. All right, the rest of you get the passengers lined up while Pedro and I get the cash in that box. Yeah, yeah, let us not waste too much time, Snakey. We have the gold we came up to there in the box. We'll take that gold and everything of value the passengers have. Then we'll turn the horses loose and set fire to the stage. I'll get busy, man. Long after that, the gang held up a cafe in a small town along the Pecos River. Very freeze, all of you. This is a holdup. Yeah, a holdup. Pedro, you and the others line him up and take the Wallace and gun. See, let us go, amigos. When you get through with him, we'll take their belts and boots and throw them into the street. <laughs> they sure aren't going to be able to follow us for quite a while. Snakey's gunman even had no regard for the people who gathered for Sunday services in the meeting house in Dry Rock. All right, have your guns ready, man. <laughs> We're going to attend a Sunday meeting and really give the folks a surprise. <laughs> I understand that men all leave their guns at the door when they come here to Sunday meeting, Snakey. Yeah, that's a break for us. Come on. All right, folks, just keep your seats and get out your cash and valuables. Pedro, you and Red collect what they have. The rest of us will keep them covered in case some hombre forgot to leave his gun at the door. Hey, let's go, Pedro. And be sure to grab the collection plate from up there on the platform, Pedro. We don't want to miss anything. This is a place of worship. You men have one spark of decency in you. 
You'll stop this outrage and leave us in peace. Say, if you're preaching for the congregation, Parson, we don't have to listen to it. I demand that you leave this meeting house at once. Now, uh, look, you. You don't stop yapping, we'll set fire to the place, and there won't be any meeting house left, Savvy. Hurry up, Pedro Red. Get a move on. And remember, be sure to grab the collection plate that's up there by the parson. Uh, uh, we have it! Soon, wherever men gathered in the Southwest Territory, the conversation usually turned into a discussion of Snaky Cook's ruthless deed. Nobody's safe out here anymore with that Snaky Cook and his gang roaming at large. I heard they held up a small wagon train. Took everything worth taking. And while the poor pioneers and their women folks stood by helpless, the outlaws burned the wagons. Yeah, and another time, Snaky and his gang robbed everybody at a church meeting. Then set fire to the meeting house before they rode away. Snake is one of the toughest, meanest outlaws bar none who ever pulled a trigger. And I, for one, am just waiting for the day I'll meet the hombre who will finally get the better. While the discussions about Snakey were at their height, Lone Ranger and his Indian companion, Tonto, rode the trail into the southwest territory near the town of Lime Rock. We hear plenty about outlaw named Snakey Cook, Kimasavi. Yes, he and his gang leave more destruction behind them than a band of hostile Indians. Ah. It's because of him that we've come down this way. I'm hoping there's some way to get a line on him and his gang. Mm, that not be easy. Yes, I know. We'll camp in the hills near Lime Rock, Tonto. And we'll try to figure out some way to bring Snaky Cook into the open. Come on, sir. Stop, stop. It was after sundown when the Lone Ranger and Tonto found a suitable campsite. Later, they discussed possible plans for getting a line on Snaky Cook's gang. People say Cook, plenty smart outlaw. Him always find good hideout. The only way to catch him and his men is to bring them out of hiding at a given time and place so the law can be ready for them. Ah, but how you do that? That's what I hope to find out, Tonto. Right now, I don't know where to begin. Now, Kimasabi, maybe if me go to town now, me find something out. All right. While you're gone, I'll ride through the hills and look around. I'll see you later here at camp. Adios. Adios. Meantime, Snaky Cook was playing cards with two of his men in a shack in the foothills a few miles away when another member of the gang entered. Oh, wait a minute. Hold it. Hey there, Johnny. What brings you here from Pegasus? Howdy, Snakey. Hi, Pedro. Right. Hi, amigo. Uh, sit down and answer my question. Snakey, I was following a couple of hombres who are out to get you and the gang. <laughs> yeah. Well, you ought to know a lot of hombres are out to get us, but none of them have or ever will. <laughs> that is right. Some of the best lawmen in the territory have tried to run us down. <laughs> but they've never got any place. Maybe. But you see, the ones I'm talking about aren't exactly lawmen. What do you mean, they aren't exactly lawmen? What I mean is they help the law, but they're not sheriffs or anything like that. Right. That sounds local to me. Yeah, me too. Hey, look, you, you say you followed those two hombres all the way from Pegasus? Yep, I sure did. Where are they now? That's what I come to tell you. They're camping in the hills between here and Lime Rock. What makes you think they're hunting for us? And listen, Snakey, you didn't leave me and Pecos to spy for nothing. I have ways of finding out things. And one of the things I learned is that the masked man and Indian are out to get you and the rest of us. Masked man and Indian? Yeah. Haven't you ever heard of the Lone Ranger? What? The Lone Ranger? You mean that's who he is? That's right. The Lone Ranger and his Indian pal. I have heard of him. Yeah, and so have I. I heard that that masked man is one hombre who never gives up. He's someone to worry about. You, you say you know where they're camping? Yeah, just about. And you ought to do something about them before they really go into action against us. That's good advice, Johnny. Advice I'm going to follow. Uh, Pedro, uh, get the other three men, huh? Oh, see? What are we going to do, Snakey? 
We'll have Johnny lead us to the place where those two hombres are camping out. Then we'll ease up on them and surprise them before they know what it's all about. Let's get a horse, sir. After getting the men together, Johnny led the way to the place where the Lone Ranger and Tonto had turned off the main trail to their camping site. Just ahead by those boulders is where the masked man and the Indian turned off. I figure they went back into the hollow near the creek to make camp. Yeah, that would be the logical thing to do. We'll stop here. Oh, 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 oh. Now listen close, all of you. All right, all right. We'll ride in part of the way, easy like. Then we'll dismount and go the rest of the way on foot. We'll surround their camp, then move in quiet like so as not to wake them up. Till I'm ready to wake them, Savvy? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Now remember to be quiet. And above all... Don't get trigger happy. Wait for me to give the orders. But let's get moving. Get up there. Get up there. Come on. Meantime, Tonto had returned from town. And finding that the Lone Ranger was still away from camp, the Indian rolled into his blanket to sleep. His paint horse, Scout, hitched nearby, was alert. Suddenly, he raised his head and sniffed the air. His keen nostrils caught strange scents, and his sharp ears heard subdued sounds that meant danger. Pawing the ground, the big paint horse gave warning. <laughs> Tonto awoke and sat up, watching and listening. The silvery moonlight brightened the clearing. Tonto's keen hearing detected the snapping of a twig back among the trees. Mm. Somebody sneak into camp. He waited, still in the sitting position. Then reached out and took one of his guns from his gun belt, which lay beside him. He'd be ready. Then Tonto saw a shadow move from one tree to another. He looked around and saw other shadows move among the trees. He realized he was surrounded and decided any quick move on his part would bring a bullet. They got you surrounded, Indian. Drop your gun and don't move. Uh, me drop gun. Uh, get up. Walk to the center of the clearing. Then sit down again so you can't make a break for your horse. Tonto slowly got up and walked to the center of the clearing. He sat down near some stones they had gathered to put around the campfire, which had gone out. Then Snakey and his men moved in. Reckon you can't pull any tricks now, Indian. They got you just like a sitting duck. Why you come here? First, tell me where's that mass friend of yours. Him not here. Yeah, we can see that. I understand you and the mass man came here hunting Snakey Cook. Well, I'm sneaky, you savvy. We've come hunting you, hombres. Yeah, we got you. I brought six men with me. It's too bad that friend of yours isn't here to greet us. Then we'd be able to put bullets in both here. You gonna plug the redskin, Snakey? Not now. We'll take him along to the hideout. As Snakey talked, Toto sat fingering pebbles on the ground. Knowing he was now unarmed, no one paid attention as he unsuspectingly arranged a few of the small stones in such a way as to tell the Lone Ranger and Indian symbols that he'd been captured by Snakey and his gang. <laughs> that red skin does not seem very smart to me. Look at him sitting there fumbling with those stones as if nothing happened. <laughs> well, something will happen to him before long. Let me put a bullet in the Indian right now. Yeah, no, no, wait. I don't see any reason for waiting, Snakey. Let us settle with the Indian, then we get the mouse man later. Don't be local. When he finds out the Indian's missing, you'll be on guard. Why don't you want to kill the Indian, Snakey? I have a good reason. Uh, what reason? We'll uh, hold on to this Indian. Use him as bait. As long as the Lone Ranger knows his friend is alive, you will try to find him. Get him away from us. <laughs> That'll give us a chance to riddle the masked man with bullets. Then we'll kill the Indian and have them both out of our way for good. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. When his 
man wanted to kill Tonto immediately, Snaky Cook said he had a reason for waiting, saying they'd used Tonto as bait to bring the masked man to his death. The crook Johnny at first didn't agree with Snaky. Hold on a minute, Snaky. Huh? That masked man is working with the law. He'll trail us and come to our camp with a posse. Yeah, yeah. Let's stop worrying. Just leave it to me. He can't bring the law the way I'll fix it. How do you figure, Snaky? Now, listen. First, I have a new hideout in mind. An old farm five miles up the trail. We'll cover our tracks going to it by riding most of the way in the creek. Then I'll get word back here to the masked man that if he wants to see his Indian friend alive... For him to come to Triangle Rock on the river trail and to come along. How are you going to get word back here to him? Anyway, he might think we already did away with the Indian. Oh, yeah. I've heard a lot about this Indian and the Lone Ranger. I also heard about the horses. But what about the horses? They're well trained, that's what. We'll make the Indian sign a note. Then we'll fasten it to the Indian's paint horse and turn him loose. The horse will head back here to this camp. That masked man will be watching the trails and see him. Isn't that right? That's not so smart, Snakey. The masked man can backtrack on the paint and find the new hideout. If he backtracks the paint, he isn't going to find the new hideout, Johnny. But he will ride straight to his death. Ah, you don't make sense. Will you hear all my plan? When we get to Triangle Rock, we'll turn the paint loose. Then cover our trail to the hideout. Any backtracking will only bring the masked man to Triangle Rock, where we want him to come. Ah, see, it's a good idea. When he reaches there, a couple of us can ambush him. And then we'll finish off the Indian. That's the idea. <laughs> well, let's get back to our horses. One of you lead the Indian on the paint, huh? Let's go. <laughs> The Lone Ranger came back to the camp and pulled to a stop. Otto is not here, but his blanket's on the ground. Something must have happened. The Lone Ranger glanced around, then studied the ground. He saw the footprints of at least half a dozen men. Then he saw the pebbles Tonto had so carefully arranged. They formed the Indian symbol which meant trouble or disaster and the sign of a serpent or snake. After a moment, the masked man understood the cryptic message. Snake has him. The great horse, Silver, sensed that something was wrong. He pawed the ground. Yes, yeah, Silver, we'll find Hollow and Scout. When we do, we'll see to it the snaky cook and his gunslingers are brought to justice. I'll go to town and ask the sheriff to get a party together. Then we come back here and pick up the trail. <laughs> see the big fellow? Come on, Silver! The masked man rode at breakneck speed to town. He followed back streets, then stopped in the shadows behind the sheriff's office. Oh, oh easy, said enough. Moving cautiously to avoid being noticed, he waited until he could slip into the sheriff's office. Hello, Sheriff. I'm glad to find you alone. Now, Master Humphrey, what's the meaning of this? It's all right, Sheriff. My guns are holstered. I came here to tell you the snaky cook is... Snaky cook? You're one of his men. No, you're mistaken. Stay right where you are, mister. I've got you covered. Forget the mask. I'm not an outlaw. Only outlaws wear them, as I know of. Sure about that? Well, outside of one hombre I've heard about. Would that hombre carry bullets like this one? That looks like a silver bullet. It is. Say, what's the name of your horse? Silver. By thunder. Are you the Lone Ranger? That's right. Oh, sorry to draw him like that, but seeing that mask... I understand. Sheriff, my friend Tonto has been captured by Snaky Cook and his men. Snaky Cook? Great day. Do you think that you can find the hideout? Yes, if you'll help me. We go back to our camp where they captured Tonto. Then we'll go on from there. And I'll get a posse together right away, mister. And I'll tell them about the mask so that they'll know who you are. All right, let's hurry, Sheriff. There's no time to lose. Outlaws reached Triangle Rock with Tonto. Snakey called a halt. Oh, 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 oh. oh. All right, Indian, get off your horse. He's easy, 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 easy. Easy. Now, here's the pencil and a scrap of paper I had in my saddlebag. I'll print a note. Then if you can write your name, you sign it, Savvy. Oh, me, Savvy. Me write name. Good. Uh, this flat rock will do as a table. 
Oh, let them out. For several minutes, Snakey Cook printed on the piece of paper. Then, satisfied with the result, he handed the pencil to Tonto. Right here. Write your name at the bottom. Go ahead. Uh-huh. Hey, does it take all that? Hurry it up. Uh, me write Indian name. Uh, here. It have name on it now. Yeah, it looks like a lot of local marks to me. Uh, all those redskins use funny-looking signs. That's what you call writing in the Indian language. Well, I reckon it's all right, then. Now I'll fasten it to your horse's saddle. Uh, that's it. Now tell that pity of yours to get away from here. Go, Scout. Find Lone Ranger. Go, Scout. <laughs> well, there he goes. Now, Indian, you ride double with me. We'll cover our tracks and go to the new hideout. Sometime later, the Lone Ranger with the sheriff and posse arrived at the camp where Toto had been captured. <laughs> This is where we were camping, Sheriff. Yeah, if we can find their trail, we'll follow them to the hideout. And listen, a rider coming. A scout, my friend's horse. Oh, scout, whoa, easy, steady now. There's a note on the saddle. What's it say? Wait a minute. You want to see your Indian friend alive? Come to Triangle Rock, two miles up the main trail. He is signing this note. Come alone. Snakey Cook. Mm, there's something else on here, Sheriff. Now, steady, boy, steady. What is it? Haven't you go to Triangle Rock as a trick? Now, wait a minute, I... wait a minute. Look here. This is what Tonto wrote as his signature. Yeah. Now, that's the funniest way to write Tonto I ever saw. He fooled him into thinking that indicates his Indian name. What Tonto actually did was to write several Indian symbols... He knew I'd know what they mean. Well, what do they mean? Yeah. It says hideout old farmhouse up creek five miles. I know where that is. And let's go. I suggest you send the deputy and a few men to Triangle Rock. I think they'll find a couple of outlaws waiting to ambush me. They can circle around and approach from the uptrail side. All right. A few of you men go and grab anyone you find at Triangle Rock. But be careful. Right. We'll right. get them. Yep. 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 Get it, Get it now. Get it. Let's get to that farm. You said to me, fella, I'm ready. <laughs> designated to go to Triangle Rock, left the trail before reaching that point, and circled around until they were well past the place where two of the crooks were waiting to ambush the Lone Ranger. Then the sheriff's men headed back along the trail, the intention of taking the crooks by surprise. When we get near the rock, we leave the trail and move in on them in a semicircle. Maybe Snakey is there with his whole gang. Nope. According to the note the masked man got from the Indian, Snakey and some of his men are waiting at that farmhouse hideout with the Indian. I reckon they figure as soon as they hear the masked man has been shot, they'll kill the Indian. But, hey, look, there's Triangle Rock ahead. Boom, 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 boom. Now, men, we'll separate. Two of us go to the left and two to the right. Then we'll move in toward the rock from each side. I think that's the best plan. Uh, hey, they've seen us. No time for sneaking up on them now. Come on. Get up there. Come on. Get up there. Riding fast, the sheriff's men headed toward the big rock, firing as they went. They soon realized there were only two crooks hiding there. One of them was wounded. The other managed to get away. Ho, 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 ho. Well, we got one of them. The other will head for the hideout to warn Snakey. Clem, you stay here and take care of this crook. The rest of you follow me. Come on, get up there. Come on. Later at the farmhouse, Snakey Cook sat with Pedro and Johnny in the main room. Tonto, tied hand and foot, lay on a bunk against the wall. Seems to me it's past time that masked man reached Triangle Rock and got what was coming to him. Yeah, there's been time enough for that and for Red and Joe to get back here with his horse guns and masks to prove they got him. 
Them never get hoarse. Guns and masks of Lone Range. Oh, shut up, you. You've seen the last of that bash, man. And soon you wind up like he did with a bullet in your hide. Oh, uh, there's somebody coming. Hey, Red, you get him? No. Oh, they got Joe. I got away. With some of the sheriff. Uh, so the bash man didn't pay any attention to the note, huh? Shows what he cares about his Indian friend. Say, Johnny, call the others in here from the back room, huh? We'll plug this Indian, and then we'll get away from here pronto. Now get the others. Uh, why are we leaving, Snakey? Why, well, you fool. Thank you, Those men who got you will trail red here. Hey, I'd never thought of that. No, I have to do the thinking for all of you. Here they are, Snakey. All right. Now you'll see me put a bullet in that Indian. Then we'll get our horses and leave. This is your finish, Redskin. Hey, the shot came through the window. Let's go outside after him. Oh, here you are, all of you. The masked man. Plug him. Hold it. It's better at the window than the door. You're all trapped. Now look at the windows. Men with guns. And I'm here in the doorway what? waiting to shoot down the cabal. Oh, Sheriff. Sheriff. Hey, the Sheriff. Plug your guns, all of you. We'll fight your way out. Not me. Oh. We better give up and save our skins. Here's my gun. Here's, Here's mine. Here's there's Snakey Cook on the floor with a leg wound. Uh, I'm me glad you get here, Kimasabi. Me hope you read message or note. Message? What You're not smart enough, Cook. That so-called signature told me where to find this place. You all right, Tonto? Uh, I'm here, all right. I'll cut those cords. Uh, I brought Scout with me. I'm not good. We go now, Kimasabi? Sheriff have plenty men. Them take gang to town. Yes, they want to take over now. Come on, Tonto. Adios, Sheriff. Adios, mister. Hey, Sheriff. How comes that hombre keeps that mask on, huh? Yeah, what's the meaning of that, Sheriff? Well, it keeps crooks from knowing who he really is. I doubt that anyone's seen his face unless maybe the Indian has. But mask or no mask, he's one mighty smart hombre. And Snakey Cook was a fool for thinking that he could ever get the best of the Lone Ranger. George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer.